One of the coolest things about the Xbox Series S is just how small and compact it is. I mean, you can take it with you just about anywhere and set it up and play and have a good time. But what if you don't have a TV to connect to? Well, that's where the team over at DepG have stepped up and they have a number of different portable monitors designed to clip right on to your Xbox Series S, essentially making it into an Xbox gaming laptop. Now we have their 15.6 inch HDR display 2K screen here. But like I mentioned, they have a number of different sizes depending on your budget and depending on what you're looking to do. Let's go ahead, let's take this out of the box, let's set it up with our Xbox Series S and see how does it look, how does it sound, and how does it play. So here we have the Depth G. This is the DE156 SG monitor. That basically means it's a 15.6 inch display. You can see down below here, it does say 15.6 inches. It does support HDR, FreeSync support, and OD support. Not quite sure what that is. And this is a pretty big display. That's why you kind of see the outside of the photo booth here too. Um, taking a look at the back, you can kind of see, you know, the overall layout and everything. Uh, open or close the monitor, it'll be completely integrated with the Xbox Series S. Uh, stronger functions specifically designed for the Xbox Series S and the multiple infra uh, interfaces and function key. Note the Series S is not included, nor would you expect it to be included. So let's go ahead, let's open this up. Taking a look here, everything is really packed nicely. That's a good thing. I like how everything's packed. So we've got foam, foam on the range. We've got box here of some type. And then, oh, that's interesting. Not sure what I was expecting. Wasn't this though. So here's how everything comes out of the box. Slide off our styrofoam pads there. Looks like there's a metal bracket here that will kind of keep everything together eventually. So looking at the back here, you do have two headphone jacks right there, two HDMI ports, both labeled 1440p, 60 hertz. Actually, I take that back. This one is 1440p, 60 hertz. This is 1440p, 144 hertz. Does require its own separate power supply, so that's a bit of a bummer there. That is a nice large display. So on the front here, you do have your function buttons, which I was kind of expecting a soft rubber membrane, not hard plastic, but okay. Stereo speakers there. And then it looks like these two halves kind of clip onto the Xbox Series S itself. Now we do have an accessory box that came inside. Let's take a look here. Instruction manual is in here, along with your HDMI pigtail, uh, remote control, a couple other things. And then here is the dedicated power supply for the monitor itself. And taking a look here, uh, 12 volt, 2 amp, 24 watt uh, is the output on the included power supply. And again, just a short pigtail here for the HDMI cable. Remote control. This is basically the same kind of generic remote control that a lot of Android TVs use. Um, it's actually the same model, I think that uh, is included with the RetroTINK 5X, so that's interesting. And then another baggie with some screws in here and some 3M tape. Let's take a look at the instructions really quick and see what that's all about. Oh, so easy enough here. So the screws here that are included are designed to go through those holes to lock everything together to make sure that your Xbox Series S doesn't basically come disconnected from it so that is good to note yeah nothing really major here for you know the setup let's go ahead let's get our xbox series s installed in this because i'm really interested to see how this goes together all right so we're going to install our xbox series s here you want to make sure that you have the ports and everything towards the back and the usb port and the reset and power buttons towards the front now um, this side was still attached this did come off which is fine uh, there's a little tab here, so you come in at an angle, pull it forward, and then this will be into our system somehow, maybe. And this side just came off, of course. We're gonna do. We're gonna take this. Come on, you! Wow, not user-friendly I will say that much so we are going to take and put our system here maybe 
This is a pain in the butt. I can see one of the tabs is already broken down below. That's awesome. In here somehow. There we go. Now that we have everything in, I'm going to take the screws and I'm going to put them in the top. That was not user friendly at all. In fact, I would say that is the opposite of user friendly. Screwdriver's kind of craptastic too. I'm, I'm using it because it was included, but I would definitely recommend it using your own Phillips blade screwdriver because this is not very good. There we go. Yeah, we got it in there. I actually pulled the front off a little bit. So that's on. We're gonna close the lid. And doesn't look like that's, looks like this side is permanently attached. There's no screw holes on that side. So interesting to note. While we have it upside down, I'm also gonna go ahead and just connect the HDMI out from here to the 1440p, 144 hertz. And then we are gonna plug in our power cord here and we'll get the power supply connected there as well. Almost looks, let me double check the manual real quick. That makes sense then. So now we take this and go across the front and that keeps the system closed. So like that like that so that will keep you know the system from pushing out against the clamps there one thing and i don't know if this shows up well on camera this is a slightly different white than this so they are not a this is more gray i would say than white on there so that is interesting and uh nothing that indicates where this has to go so the remote control like i say it's the same one essentially that's included with the uh retro tank 5x very familiar with this remote um, no batteries included, so we've got to go grab some AAAs real quick. All right, so we have all the power cords and everything hooked up now as well. Let's go ahead, and we are going to power on our system. Now, one thing I will say, I do like the fact that down here on the base of it, you do have plenty of room for the exhaust to go ahead and, uh, well, exhaust. Now, one thing of curious, so I do have the remote here. I wonder if I turn on the monitor, will it turn on the system? So there, the monitor... Popped on for a second, popped off. I was impatient. I may have turned it off, so let's try it again. Turn on and turn off again. Nope, it's still on. So there in the upper right-hand corner, it's saying HDMI 1 or HDMI 2. So you can select that. I'm going to turn off our lights here just so you can kind of see everything a little bit better. And I know recording in this style, you don't get the best picture quality, but there's nothing else really I can do here. So menu, brightness, contrast, volume, and then color temperature. This is just like one of those portable monitors, quite honestly. So there's color temperature, there's normal, there's warm, there's user, sRGB, there's cool, there's normal. It definitely, the colors are definitely soft. Now picture settings, wow, there's a lot in here. You can adjust. Brightness, contrast, sharpness, black levels, DCR, eco mode. We are going to turn eco mode pop. I don't know if that's not what I thought it was. So there's game. All right, game mode. Low blue noise reduction, color temperature normal. There's warm, user, basically the same thing we were going through just earlier. Gamma, you can adjust the colors hue and saturation are there um, dynamic luminous control off by default there's on off on and an aspect ratio sound set you can adjust the volume adjust treble bass balance or mute general settings input source here is HDMI 2. Free sync is off. I'm going to turn that on. I will say the OK button in the center, not very responsive as far as the, the monitor doesn't always respond to my inputs. HDR is auto. We're going to set that to on. Auto power source, we're going to set that to, let's see, off. 240, 120 
on-screen display transparency and the timeout and then you can reset oh come on dude let me out of here exit all right so let's grab our controller here real quick and let's do some testing and i am using just a standard wireless red controller and you can't see it because of the brightness adjustment um i will say the sideline angles are pretty good so i'm actually sitting off to the side if you know right here is center of the camera i'm off to this side uh sitting and playing let's go to settings tv and display options resolution let's go to 1440p So there's 1440p refresh rate 120 this is only 2k not 4k so 4k none of that other none of those other items really matter calibrate hdr for games your tv or current setup does not support 4k hdr okay so that's only 4k hdr that it has on there and video modes all right everything else is as it should be. Now, one of the issues here is the fact my camera is 1080p. I am recording or broadcasting here uh, on screen in 1440p. So I'm seeing a better picture here than what you're seeing through the camera. But I have to admit, this doesn't look bad. It it looks soft, I will say that. Uh, let's go to track here and let's see what we can do at Silverstone. Now, I think for us right now, this is a little bit loud, so I'm going to pause. We're going to turn it down just a little bit. So one bummer on the remote is it doesn't actually have volume buttons, so I have to go into the settings to adjust the volume. That's that's a pain. So that was 50 for the volume. Oh, I can't just hold it down and have it go down. I have to click the remote every stinking time. Or no, there it is. It finally started responding. Yeah, adjusting the volume on this, not good, at least from the remote. So let me do this. Can I just adjust it here? Yep. There we go. All right, that's much better. Initial responsiveness and everything feels good. I mean, this is not a huge test of lag, latency, or delay. And this is actually my first lapse on this track in F122 with this car and this setup, so... I have no idea if the setup is any good or not. Draw distance looks good. The blacks look a little bit soft to me. Like I say, this really reminds me of those, you know, those those portable gaming monitors. And I've tested a number of them in the past. Uh, this is the first time I've I've done anything with DepG, so I'm not sure if they're using a similar panel to like WiMAX it coming across, getting ready to to take the flag here and complete our our hot lap. All right, we are the fastest one in practice right now. Let's go to garage. And basically for this, I just want to see what my time is compared to everybody else. So we're session info. And let's see, we're at a 145.4. The next best is at a 151.5. So yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty, pretty good. So zooming in on this a little bit tighter just so you can get a little bit of a better look here at MLB The Show. Have Urias leading off. Cutter in the, uh, on the inside there. So timing there on that felt about right. Um, I'll see here again. We'll, we'll, we'll go through a couple at-bats. One thing I do want to do real quick, too, is I did have to power cycle this. I want to see if it kept all my settings. It did not. So that's interesting to note when I turned it off. Like, you guys saw that I had HDR was on. Now it was off. Now it's back on again. Oh, I thought I hiled up in time. All right, was not filming, but did want to go ahead. We'll get you the replay on this. Did just hit a home run with Rowdy Telez, which is very, very awesome. So we'll check this here. Two-run blast. Keston here did strike out. Drove in a run. Here we go. Bam. Beautiful swing. Beautiful drive to the outfield. Two runs come across to score for Milwaukee. 
Maldonado, not the fastest. I did trade for him, uh, brought him back into the Brew Crew. But let's go ahead now and let's check the next half inning and see how it is to pitch. Yeah, Brendan Woodruff, pretty good. 16 and 0, 038 or 083 ERA. Pitched 130 innings, allowed only. Uh, what do we have here? Six walks, 170 strikeouts. Yeah, Woody's pretty good. So this, the way that I have this, my pitching mechanics set up, I do have to time the meter. And again, seems like I'm perhaps hitting a little bit early. Oh, nice three-pitch strikeout right there. Matt Frazier, sit on down. There we got, uh, got the timing down. Oof, blew it right by him. The immaculate inning is gone, and there is the no-hitter to shoot. I was hoping for an immaculate inning. I've only done it twice so far. For those who don't know what an immaculate inning is, nine pitches, all strikes. Just outside. Just a bit outside. Oh, runner on the move. Can we double him up? Don't think so. And, yes, I also traded for Christian Arroyo from uh, the Red Sox. We have made a few changes to this roster. Former Brewer now at the plate, Daniel Vogelback. Reminds me of Ham. Oh, you are out by a mile. I'm not a huge Halo fan, but we are going to play a little bit of Halo Infinite just because I think it'll be one of those things that, you know, for people familiar with the game, it'll be a good judge of how, again, this looks here. Um, I have honestly not played this a whole lot. And again, any artifacting you're seeing right there, that's just due to the fact that I'm playing this streaming from the cloud, so I can't blame uh, the screen for any of this. Um, so while we're playing this, what do I think of it overall? So I do like the fact that you have the option of both 60 and 144 hertz. Um, I do like the fact that it does hold your system fairly well in here. Um, oh, what do we have here? Pick up the needler. Actually, I'll pull it. There we go. Um, you know, I, I'm not thrilled with how it attaches to the system. Uh, and I'm also really not thrilled at the fact that it does require its own separate power supply. That's kind of a bummer. Um, I wish there was some way that it could go ahead and pull power right off of the system itself. Um, I think the build quality is just okay. It's interesting that they do have three different sizes depending on you know, your need and your budget. 15.6 um, is a nice size display. Uh, what do I need to do here? Um, the speakers are okay. I don't like the fact that when you power cycle it, you basically have to reset and you lose all of your settings. That was, you know, not, not great. Um, you know, is this worth 400 bucks is what it basically boils down to. I, I don't know. Um, it has potential, but I think there's a lot kind of left that, uh, you know, could definitely be improved upon. I think that it has some some interesting features, but I don't know that it's something for $400. I don't know that it really provides an exceptional gaming experience. Um, definitely, you know, an interesting gaming experience, um, you know, especially for those who you know, may have, oh, blowed up again, uh, you know, may not have a, a TV to go ahead and connect to. And that's the other thing, too, is this is only, you know, it is only a monitor. It is only 1440p at most. It does not do, you know, 4K at all. So uh, you are, you know, kind of down as far as the overall visuals go um, compared to, what you could maybe get from a, um, uh, you know, a, a cheap TV, for example. So, I mean, like I say, interesting overall. Um, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Though. So there you have my look at the Depth G 15.6 inch monitor for the Xbox Series S. And what do I think about it? Well, first and foremost, it does basically, you know, it's, it's like it's turning your Xbox Series S into a portable gaming laptop, which is neat. And the fact that it does have the remote control is convenient. Uh, 
I will say, however, for the money, I don't know that it provides enough of an enhanced experience that would warrant buying something like this over like a gaming monitor. Now, uh, one of the things with a lot of those portable gaming monitors is you are stuck at 1080p. This does deliver 1440p, so you will get better resolution on it. You will also get 144 hertz refresh rate, which a lot of those are 60 to 120. So you will get some improvement there. The speakers are better than those portable gaming monitors. So there are things that kind of justify the cost of this versus those. I don't travel a whole lot like I used to. And if I'm going to take a gaming system with me on the go, it'll probably be my Nintendo Switch. But if we are out and about and going for long road trips, we drive from here to Florida almost annually at this point. When the kids get a little bit older, we'll take this with us probably, they play in the car. The one bummer is the fact that it does not get power straight off of the system. I do wish that it could draw power right off of the Xbox Series S. Now, granted, looking at the power requirements of this, I get kind of why it doesn't, but even just having the option instead of that barrel type connection, give me a USB-C so at least I can try with something. That's one of the things I feel like I've been handcuffed a little bit with this. Now, I did not try the headphone jacks on it. Just I wanted you to be able to hear the audio on it. Uh, really, if I'm going to use headphones, I'm not going to plug into this. I'll connect my Bluetooth headphones. That is one thing that is nicer about the Xbox Series S than the PlayStation 5. You can use regular Bluetooth headphones and it'll work without a problem. Um, the overall construction, like I say, the, the white isn't quite white. It's a little bit more gray than white. Um, and I also find it interesting that they needed to integrate two different HDMI ports that they couldn't just have an auto sense between 60 and 144 hertz for the refresh rate. Kind of wish they would have been able uh, to do that. Above and beyond that on here, I mean, you've got access to all of your main ports. You've got your you know, LAN, your two USB ports, HDMI output, obviously, your expansion storage and power. And then you just have power in your two HDMI ports here. So. I mean, maybe it's something where if you set this up in a kid's bedroom and instead of having a television, like say you didn't want to have a TV in a kid's room, they could play this. But I don't know necessarily that you would want this to be out of sight, out of mind. But let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Is this something you would pick up? Is this something of any interest to you? Now, if you do want to check out some of the other videos that we've done and some of the other gaming monitors that we've uh, reviewed uh, and some of the other content we've done for the Xbox Series S, how we actually got our Xbox Series S. I will have that link for you in the upper corner. Go ahead, check it out. I'm sure you'll enjoy.